Ebola virus disease is a severe and often fatal illness caused by infection with the Ebola virus. Since its first identification in 1976, Ebola virus disease has caused sporadic outbreaks primarily in Sub-Saharan Africa. Ebola viruses are members of the Filoviridae family, genus Orthoebola virus. To date, six species of Ebola virus have been identified. Of these, Zaire Ebola virus, Sudan Ebola virus, Thai forest Ebola virus, and Bundibugio Ebola virus are known to cause disease in humans. Zaire Ebola virus is associated with the highest case fatality rates. The primary natural reservoir is believed to be fruit bats of the Pteropodidae family. Human infection typically follows close contact with blood, secretions, organs, or bodily fluids of infected animals such as bats, chimpanzees, gorillas, monkeys, forest antelopes, or porcupines. Human-to-human -human transmission occurs through direct contact with the blood, secretions, or other bodily fluids of infected individuals, or with contaminated surfaces such as bedding and clothing. Bodily fluids capable of transmitting the virus include blood, feces, saliva, urine, vomit, breast milk, amniotic fluid, semen, and vaginal fluids. Transmission requires entry through broken skin or mucous membranes. Importantly, individuals become infectious only once they develop symptoms. Upon entering the body, the Ebola virus targets antigen-presenting cells such as dendritic cells and macrophages. The virus replicates locally and then spreads to regional lymph nodes, the bloodstream, and the lymphatic system. This leads to widespread infection of various tissues, including endothelial cells, hepatocytes, and adrenal cortical cells. The pathophysiology of Ebola virus disease is marked by significant immune system dysregulation. The viral glycoprotein facilitates viral entry into host cells and helps evade immune responses. A secreted form of glycoprotein may bind to neutrophils, inhibiting their activation. Infected macrophages and dendritic cells release pro-inflammatory cytokines, contributing to a cytokine storm characterized by widespread vascular leakage, impaired coagulation, and multi-organ failure. The direct infection of endothelial cells disrupts vascular integrity, increasing permeability and causing plasma leakage. Coagulation abnormalities arise from clotting factor consumption and platelet dysfunction. Bleeding manifestations occur but are not present in all cases. Hepatic infection impairs clotting factor production, and adrenal gland infection can cause adrenal insufficiency, worsening the circulatory collapse. Fatal cases often involve high viral loads, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and profound shock. Survivors usually demonstrate an early and effective immune response, including neutralizing antibody production. The incubation period of Ebola virus disease ranges from 2 to 21 days, with an average of 8 to 10 days. Early symptoms are nonspecific and may resemble other tropical diseases such as malaria or typhoid fever. Initial symptoms typically include the sudden onset of fever, profound fatigue, muscle and joint pain, headache, and sore throat. As the disease progresses, gastrointestinal symptoms often develop, including severe watery diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Additional symptoms may include chest pain, shortness of breath, confusion, eye irritation, and hiccups. A maculopapular rash often appears five to seven days after symptom onset. Bleeding manifestations, reported in approximately 40% of patients, may present as petechiae, ecchymosis, oozing from venipuncture sites, mucosal hemorrhage, or bleeding from the gastrointestinal tract. Severe cases can rapidly evolve into multi-organ failure, shock, and death. Diagnosing Ebola virus disease early is challenging because of the nonspecific nature of the initial symptoms. A high index of suspicion is necessary for individuals with a history of travel to or residence in areas with active outbreaks or those who have had contact with suspected or confirmed Ebola virus disease cases. Laboratory confirmation is essential. The most common method is the detection of viral RNA in blood or body fluids using reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR. Viral RNA typically becomes detectable within a few days after symptom onset. 
Other diagnostic methods include antigen capture detection tests, antibody capture enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays, virus isolation by cell culture, and electron microscopy. Early in infection, viral loads may be low. Therefore, a negative RT-PCR result does not exclude Ebola virus disease, and repeat testing may be necessary if clinical suspicion remains high. All samples must be handled in high containment laboratories due to the significant biohazard risk. The management of Ebola virus disease is primarily supportive and must occur in specialized treatment units with high-level infection control practices. Early and aggressive supportive care significantly improves survival outcomes. Fluid and electrolyte management is critical. Patients often suffer severe dehydration due to vomiting and diarrhea. Intravenous fluid resuscitation and correction of electrolyte imbalances are essential to maintain hemodynamic stability. Nutritional support should be maintained throughout the course of illness. Symptomatic treatments target fever, pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Monitoring and managing complications such as bleeding, shock, and organ failure are necessary. Blood transfusions and treatment for co-infections such as malaria may be required. Monoclonal antibody treatments such as Inmazeb and Abanga have demonstrated improved survival in patients infected with Zaire Ebola virus. These therapies are recommended by the World Health Organization, although access can vary by outbreak setting. Strict infection prevention and control measures must be enforced. This includes the proper use of personal protective equipment by healthcare workers, safe injection practices, waste disposal, and safe burial procedures. Isolation in designated Ebola treatment units is mandatory. The prognosis of Ebola virus disease varies depending on several factors, including the virus species, viral load, patient's health status, and the timeliness and quality of care. Case fatality rates have ranged from 25% to 90%, with an overall average of approximately 50%. Infections with Zaire Ebola virus are associated with the highest fatality rates. Early diagnosis and aggressive supportive care, along with access to specific therapeutics, have significantly improved survival rates. Survivors often face a prolonged recovery period and may develop post-Ebola virus syndrome, characterized by fatigue, musculoskeletal pain, headaches, visual problems, hearing loss, neurological symptoms, and psychological disorders such as depression and anxiety. Persistent viral presence in immune-privileged sites, particularly in semen, can last for several months after clinical recovery, posing a risk of sexual transmission. Vaccination strategies have proven effective in outbreak control. The RVS VZBA vaccine, also known as Ervibo, is effective against Zaire Ebola virus and is recommended for use in outbreak settings among individuals at high risk. In conclusion, healthcare providers must remain vigilant for potential cases, apply strict infection control measures, provide comprehensive supportive care, and utilize available therapeutic and preventive interventions to improve patient outcomes and reduce transmission.